Okay, so if we look at our constant force, and you guys did a really great job of drawing a force distance graph, Newtons, and I'll, I'll put this as a, a D, an X would be fine there. And I gave you some pretty boring points of 10 Newtons and at five meters and you guys had a nice little graph like that and you found the work was equal to base times height the work is equal to 50 joules in this case and graphically the work is equal to the area under the curve that's a big deal this area right here under the curve so a spring is an example of a variable force and that's the one that you are familiar with. So if we have a variable force, what's the word var variable mean? Changing. changing. So such as a spring, that would be our changing force. And in this case, our spring force is equal to Kx for an ideal spring. Ideal means that um, its mass and energy losses are negligible for the purposes of the problem. Um, like there's no change in temperature, there's no thermal energy change with the spring, but you probably know if you were to actually do an experiment with a big old fat spring, it would have some changes. So. Um, if we graph this, you guys did a really great job. You can use D or X here. And you saw that we had some linear relationship like that. Now, what if the maximum force this spring applies is 10 Newtons and we stretch it or compress it? I really don't care because this is still a distance, not a um, displacement, five meters. Now, how much work is done by stretching or compressing that spring? So for this particular problem, if the work done is still the area under the curve or the graph there, um, we would have one half base times height, and that would be 25 joules. Instead, let's come up with a general equation that we can use for any kind of problem. So. What else can I get? Now, I found that the area under here is going to be the work. Before that, though, what would, what would something else important about this graph give us? The spring constant. That's right. And how would I find the spring constant from this graph? The slope. I'm telling you, kids, there are two things that are really important about graphs. The slope, which would give you the equation for the line, and the area under that curve. If the slope isn't important, the area may be important, or they both may be important. They, I could give you this force displacement graph, and you could find all kinds of things about this spring in this problem, okay? It can be a force question. It can be a work question. Craziness. Now, um, in general terms, then, what would our maximum force be if we... Um, stretched or compressed this guy a distance of, I'll call, instead of five, I'll call it X. So then what should our maximum force be in terms of K? KX? All right. So does that mean that in general, the work done to stretch or compress that spring would be one half? Now my base is going to be a general X. My height will be in general K times X. Is that good so far? So then the work done would be equal to, could I rewrite this as one half kx squared? So that's the work done by the force that is compressing or stretching the spring. Now, some fun stuff happens when you, um, stretch or compress a spring and let's look at okay so when we compress the spring we are storing energy in that spring 
you do work on it to compress it, and that work is one half kx squared as derived above. The U is the symbol that we use for um, potential energy. The S stands for spring because we'll have different flavors of potential energy. So this is potential energy. And in this case, it's spring potential energy. And what would the unit for potential energy be? Joules. And this is the work done on the spring. And it would also be in joules. And this is your spring constant. Does anybody remember the unit for spring constant? Uh huh, newtons per meter, that's exactly right. And you can always look at that graph there. We just said it was the slope, and the slope would be the y, or the unit would be the y unit divided by the x unit, the vertical unit divided by the horizontal unit. And then x is just our compression or stretch distance. So, stretch or compression. And what would that be measured in, in SI units? We should use meters. Very good. So be aware as you're solving problems that you might be, because what would be an, a reasonable unit to use if you were measuring the compression distance of your alien popper of science? Centimeters would be a reasonable unit to use. So what would we need to do if we were going to try to calculate in joules? we got to convert, okay? So make sure as you're reading questions, um, you're careful about recognizing when you're given centimeters because that may be a reasonable unit to be given in the problem to solve. All right, so we have energy stored in our popper, and that energy can be converted to what kind of energy when it starts moving? When there's motion, yes, kinetic energy. All right, now let's change um, gears just a little bit, and and I want to know how is energy related to when you are go run up some stairs? Do you ever run stadiums for conditioning for whatever sport you might be doing, or just run up some stairs because you're in a hurry? You run up those stairs, yeah? Okay. What force do you have to apply to your body on average to get your body from the bottom stair up to the, the, the top stair on average? Who, whose body are you moving? Uh-huh. So what average force do you think you have to apply to your body to get you up there? If you carry your backpack and your body, what force are you going to have to apply? Yeah, the total weight of whatever it is that you're moving, that's right. So if you look at like the free body diagram of the, the guy running up the stairs, he, is, he has to apply force up, some applied force, and there would be a gravitational force down on him. Now I know as you make your steps, you accelerate and then you have a positive acceleration as you're springing off the step, and you have a negative acceleration as you're putting your foot onto the step. So there are moments of greater force and lesser force and greater force and lesser force. And if we average that out, though, we're going to get um, an average force that would be equal to the weight of the object. So if this is the force you're applying, if you look for the work that you do in moving your body from the bottom step to the top step, what distance is important? If you're applying a force straight up, your feet are pushing your body straight up, you're going up the, a distance D along the stairs and a distance H above the, the bottom step. Okay, which is what symbol in my picture? Delta Y is what? H. So you have to apply a force, your gravitational force, the weight, oops, your weight, times the height because isn't um, work defined as the force that's parallel to the distance times the distance 
So applied force and height would be parallel to each other? So far, so good. Okay, what's the difference in how you feel if you run up those stairs or if you walk up those stairs? There's a difference in tiredness? Sure. Time is a big difference in your, are we doing the same amount of work is the force that you apply on average as you're running up the stairs the same as if you're just walking? Sure. Would the height be the same in both cases? So what's different? The time. The rate at which you're doing that work. The rate at which you're doing the work. So if you ever run on a treadmill, there's several, or ride a stationary bike or do the stepper thing, anything that's like a electronic and it's giving you all these readings. If you, if you go faster, what changes? Do you, do you recall those readings on the? Your speed can change. Yeah, your heart rate changes. The speed changes. Yes, you will burn more calories because you are doing more work per time. Maybe you don't look at the machine. That's okay. There's, there's another, there's a rate that you're given. And the rate at which the work is done, wouldn't that be a rate? Work over time? The rate at which velocity changes, what's that also known as? Acceleration. The rate at which work is done is known as power your power. So P stands for power. Work is in what unit? Joules. Joules. And time is in seconds. So what's power going to be measured in? Joules per second. Joules per second. But you go to the store and you buy light bulbs based on what? 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 So what's that rating on on the light bulbs? What? Right. So what do you think joules per second might be also equal to? What? A what? Now I'm going to tell you a secret. I like to be punny. No, that's not the secret. Um, Instead of using the symbol capital W for what, I, I just spell it out because, you know, it's four letters. It's okay. And you can, like, cross both T's at one time. Because you have a W for work and you guys struggle with symbols for quantities and symbols for units. And so a lot of times you make mistakes when you see that W. I'm just, just saying. I don't care. If you want to use a W for what... That's fine. I'm going to write it out for you so that I'm super duper clear. Okay? Um, now, work is also known as force times distance. And force times distance over time. Hmm. What's distance over time? Speed. So, could I replace that with force times speed? Now, I know it's a little bit tricky. So, let's see. This would be your average force that you're applying. Oops. Not farce, but force. I almost spelled it wrong again. And this would be your speed. And I know that it looks like V for velocity, but it's speed in this case. And unfortunately, we use kind of the same symbol for both. Um, so power is the rate at which work is done, or you could also think about it as the um, rate at which energy is used or converted. Converted is the better word.
So when you exercise, you run up those stairs and you're doing some work over time, don't you get warm? Usually you get warm and sweaty and stuff like that. So you're doing some work and moving your body up, but there's also a lot of your um, chemical energy is being converted to thermal energy and you heat up and get all warm and sweaty and stuff like that. Okay, so power is very, very simple in my opinion. It's just most of the time you'll see questions worded where you are asked to solve for the rate at which the work is done. So instead of asking you to find the power, the question a lot of times will word it with the definition. The rate at which energy is consumed. The rate at which the energy is being transferred from um, mechanical energy to thermal energy or something like that. And all you are solving for there is the power. Okay? But be aware that you might be looking for the, or you might be given the definition.